Now, you might have noticed something about the comic fans that we have on this channel. For a start, it seems that the new 52 is universally despised, that they love it when Ben and I purposefully mispronounce names, and they hate it when things get changed from the source material when it comes to comic book movies. But you know what? Sometimes, as in at least 10, because I mean, look at the title of this list, changes are made by the studio that can actually have positive effects on the overall product. Now, I know a lot of you will most likely disagree, but hey ho, it's a list I'm willing to take. With this in mind, I'm Jules of WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 controversial changes movies made to the comic book source that actually improved it. Number 10. Making it kid friendly The Mask. The Mask doesn't seem to get mentioned much anymore, but it was actually one of Jim Carrey's breakout roles. The film is essentially a live-action cartoon where Carrey's nerd gets turned into a hyperactive superhero by wearing a mysterious mask. Now, this plot follows the rough structure of the comic, but it tones things way the hell down. When the main character dons the mask in the comic, he doesn't become a lovable goofball, he turns into a power-hungry sadist who kills anyone who crosses him. The comic is gory and disturbing in parts, with the lead eventually being killed so that other characters can don the mask. Naturally, the film discarded the insane levels of violence and turned it into a superhero movie that relied heavily on Carrie's natural charisma. Number 9. Wolverine Doesn't Wear His Classic Outfit – X-Men While audiences have gotten used to the now X-Men movie chic leather outfits, many were disappointed that the iconic costumes from the comics weren't used at all, and they were especially upset that Wolverine wouldn't appear in his fetching yellow ensemble. Now, while more colourful outfits did make it into the X-Men universe later on, it's understandable why the studio thought that maybe their fledgling film wasn't the best time to make Wolverine do the banana. Instead, a more suitable black leather look was chosen, and while looking a little more generic didn't leave the audiences slipping on this less appealing design. Ha <laughs> ha! Puns! I've got them! Number 8. Pretty Much Everything A History of Violence the graphic novel A History of Violence was written by John Wagner, who is an absolute legend thanks to his work on 2000 AD. Like the film adaptation, the comic deals with a seemingly normal man who defends himself during a robbery, but is later confronted by mobsters claiming he used to be a famous criminal. The comic is pulpy and graphic with scenes of brutal violence. Now, The film, however, is more cerebral and quiet, and deals with the fallout Tom's past has on his family. Basically, the film has little to do with the comic outside of the setup. In fact, nobody involved with the film seemed to like the comic very much at all, but they found the concept intriguing. The storyline and characters play out much differently, with the character of Richie changing from Tom's childhood friend to his evil brother. And those that read the book were surprised by just how different the film turned out to be, but the changes were, ultimately, for the best. Number 7. No Skull Cowboy – The Crow Brandon Lee's tragic death while filming The Crow caused a number of changes to the story, as the actor hadn't finished a number of key sequences. The biggest deletion was that of the Skull Cowboy, a mysterious figure who guides Eric on his path of vengeance and warns him not to stray from it. In the original version of the movie, Eric's decision to rescue his young friend is the reason that he loses his powers, since he's not allowed to interfere with the living. The Skull Cowboy himself suffered a similar fate and is damned to wander the earth because of it. While the character is cool in theory, he would have ultimately slowed down the pace of the film, and Eric already had a guide in the form of the crow itself. Those that loved the book were naturally bummed out at his deletion, but you can understand why, and it was a pretty smart cut. Number 6. The Penguin is an Actual Penguin – Batman Returns in the comics, the Penguin was always depicted as an urbane, sophisticated crime boss with a love of trick umbrellas. Unlike a lot of Batman's foes, he's not actually insane, but his intellect makes him just as dangerous. Tim Burton, being who he is, wasn't content with a simple redesign for Batman Returns, and decided to turn the character into a Penguin-like human instead. He rubbed his trademark angst and gothiness all over the character, making him the deformed son of aristocrats who tossed him into the sewers when he was just a babby. He was then raised by penguins, as you do, loves to eat raw fish, as you do and has flippers for hands as you do. He's also a pervert and a potential child killer. As, as you do? It's a seriously dark reinvention, and despite some fans being very unhappy, this went on to inspire future comic and cartoon appearances of the character. It's very off-message from the original, but kind of makes sense within Burton's dark world. Number 5. A Happier Ending – Road to Perdition the Road to Perdition comics feature a gangster going on the run with his son after being portrayed by his boss. He seeks revenge by robbing banks and killing any assassins that come his way, whilst trying to keep his son safe. The Sam Mendes adaptation featured Tom Hanks in the lead, and toned down the gunfights and violence to focus on a more thoughtful story. A big theme of the movie is that his father doesn't want his son to follow in his footsteps and become a killer like him. This, in contrast to the comics where young Michael kills a few people along the journey, shows that the son has inherited the sins of the father. Father. The movie instead has Michael contemplating killing a few times, but ultimately doesn't have it in him. 
pussy. This more hopeful ending upset a few purists, but dramatically, it was the right way to go. Number 4. The Mandarin, Iron Man 3 My name is Trevor! Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of people hate this twist, but you know what? I thought it was hilarious! Instead of portraying a straight-ahead version of the comic character and then possibly getting accused of racial stereotyping, Marvel decided to play it with having two versions for the film. One is a drunken British actor playing the public face of the Ten Rings terrorist group, while the actual MCU Mandarin is Guy Pearce's Killian. And if that isn't good enough for you, then Marvel also gave us a peace offering in the short All Hail the King, which confirms the real Mandarin is still out there somewhere. Ooh. Number 3. Wolverine Goes Back in Time Instead of Kitty – X-Men Days of Future Past Days of Future Past is a classic story arc for the X-Men, depicting a grim future where mutants have been hunted to the point of extinction by Sentinels, and Kitty Pride has to phase back to the past to undo the chaos. Sadly, Kitty, played by Ellen Page, didn't get much to do in either of her X-Men movies, acting as a potential love interest for Iceman and The Last Stand, and being a glorified time machine in Days of Future Past. Instead of going back herself, Wolverine takes her place, which is hard to complain about really, seeing as he's the best character, according to everyone out there. That said, it does leave Kitty somewhat sidelined in a story where she used to be a prime player, which disappointed those who loved the character. Still, with the amount of ass kicked in the film, it's easy to see why Logan was chosen to go in her stead. Number 2. No Alien Squid – The Watchmen the Watchmen was about as faithful an adaptation of the acclaimed graphic novel as you could hope for, which was a good and bad thing. It was visually stunning and recreated famous images from the comic, but it was also curiously hollow and not everything from The Watchmen translated so well to the big screen. People who loved the graphic novel were also upset that the big Lovecraftian squid thing didn't turn up in the finale, which was created by Ozymandias to save humanity from nuclear destruction by uniting them against an alien threat. In the film version, he instead creates a massive bomb using Dr. Manhattan and signature to frame him for the destruction, uniting the world against him. It's a smart twist on the material and one that arguably works better because it actually makes a little bit more sense. And I know sense doesn't really sit well when you've got a giant nuclear man, but it makes more sense in because it's like, you know, not a giant squid. Anyway, this reason is why some have argued that this ending actually works better than the ending from the comic. And number one, organic web shooters, Spider-Man. One of the most controversial changes in Sam Raimi's Spooderman was the choice to have Peter Parker develop organic web shooters after being bitten by a mutant spider. Some fans absolutely hated this, so when the series was rebooted for The Amazing Spider-Man and the more recent Homecoming, Peter is seen building them instead. However, in terms of a narrative piece, it actually worked quite well for the film, because it saved them having to show him making them, and also removed issues with Parker having to reload them and then breaking and, and things like that. And when you consider the villains that are shown in Raimi's trilogy, it also makes a little bit more sense. All of the bad guys have been mutated in some way, so why not give Pete a bit of freak? And that's our list. Got any other changes to comic book films which made the product better overall? Well, let me know about them in the comments section below. And why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day? As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon.